guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna do the perfect redhead makeup and also tell you some things about redheads that you might not know. If you wanna hear about that, then stick around. Okay, so first of all, let's secure these hairs. Okay, so today's makeup look is, it's not necessarily a tutorial, you're sort of getting ready with me or watching me get ready. I will list all of the products down in the description box, so make sure you check there if you like what you see. So today's makeup look is just kind of the perfect makeup for a redhead, like the most flattering color combination and just a very easy, pretty look. Anyways, I thought it would be fun to talk about all of these weird things about redheads that I thought everybody knew that they don't, they don't know. Or some people think that they're just myths about redheads, but no. Totally true. So first things first, redheads are rare. Did you, did you know this? <laughs> redheads are rare, man. So less than 2% of the world's population are natural redheads. The highest concentration of redheads are found in Scotland. Um, their population is like 10 to 30% redheads. That's a lot. Then Ireland is the next highest concentration of natural redheads. They have 10 to 25%. And then Wales, is third place there with uh, 10 to 15%. So if 2% of the world's population are natural redheads, that means out of the 7 billion-ish people in the world, only 140 million people are redhead. Isn't that cool? So there's varying degrees of redhead, right? There's like strawberry blonde, super coppery, wild red hair, deep red hair, ginger hair, and then auburn, where it's kind of, you know, deeper, brownish. You're late. You're stunning. You're forgiven. <laughs> so I would classify myself as traditional ginger, probably leaning towards strawberry blonde, uh, especially now as I'm getting older, but we'll get to that. But I've never had that super coppery, brassy tone. It's just been plain old red. So red hair is a genetic trait that is passed, you know, through your parents, just like height, facial shape, body shape. Okay, so the red hair gene comes from your DNA. Okay, so on your DNA, on chromosome 16, is the gene called MC1R. MC1R has all the information that determines your hair color, skin color, and eye color based on um, activated melanin and mel melanocytes. We're gonna get real sciencey, okay? I really had to do some research for this. <laughs> okay, so there's two types of melanin that determine your skin color. There's eumelanin and pheomelanin. And eumelanin makes you deeper and pheomelanin makes you lighter. The people with eumelanin are located most of the time closest to the equator if you're looking at the globe and the, the folks that are uh, predominantly pheomelanin folks are further away. So the MC1R gene that determines your hair color, skin color, eye color in redheads, it's mutated. <laughs> so the redhead gene is a mutation. It causes low levels of eumelanin and high levels of pheomelanin. So 80% of the world's population actually carries the MC1R mutation, the redhead gene. So you'll see it presented in any ethnicity. So it's not just, you know, white people that can have red hair. You can see it anywhere. But because the gene, this mutant gene is a recessive trait, a lot of times it stays dormant for a really long time. It'll stay dormant through generations and generations. And fun fact about gingers, and I'm talking about fair-skinned gingers, you know, like me, people who look like me. So fair-skinned, meaning you have less eumelanin. It means that you have a sensitivity or a higher sensitivity to the sun's UV rays. If there's more eumelanin in your skin, it makes it deeper and it makes it, it's a stronger barrier to UV rays, right? So deeper skinned folks, desert dwellers, people near the equator, they're less sensitive to UV rays because they have more protection, more natural protection. And goblins like us that have less of that, we're more likely for our skin to burn from the sun's rays and more likely to develop melanoma. Womp womp. Your skin converts, you know, sunshine into vitamin D through melanin. But fun fact, folks with more pheomelanin and less eumelanin can actually produce their own vitamin D. So it means that you need less natural sunshine and less periods of time to produce enough to keep you healthy. Isn't that fun? Not enough to protect you from, you know, skin cancer, but enough to get by. 
<laughs> so if you just go back for a second about how, how do you make a redhead, right? So if you remember that day in science class when we were learning about genes, recessive and dominant genes. Chlorophyll, more like borophyll, right? If the gene is recessive, then how do you even make a redhead? Unless both parents are presenting it, meaning like they're both ginger, that the likelihood of them producing another ginger just get less and less, right? So if there's two ginger parents, the likelihood of them producing another ginger is like almost 100%. If both are only carriers, then there's only a 25% chance that they're gonna make a ginger child. If you have one ginger and one non-ginger, it's like a 50% chance. Science. If you have a couple of non-gingers, there is a great chance that, you know, they're gonna produce a ginger kid, which explains why there would be an entire family of like, brunettes and then one random redhead child. My entire family has brown hair and green eyes. And then there's me. <laughs> My skin is still on the mend and it's it's not happy with me right here. Okay, next fact about redheads. Did you know that redheads have less hair than other people? So who knew that there was studies that actually counted the hairs, every little hair in your head, and then studied who has how many and averages and all that jazz. People with darker hair, they have on average like 140,000 hairs on their head. People with blonde hair, you know, our little fair toe head friends, <laughs> they average, you know, 110,000 hairs, but gingers have about 90,000 hairs on their head. Vice 140,000. But each individual strand on a red headed person's head, they're thicker. So a person with red hair appears to present, you know, as full a head of hair as anybody else. You know, it's funny, my entire life, I kind of thought it was the opposite because I never felt like my hair was particularly thick or coarse. I don't have like that curly, wiry hair texture that some gingers have. I guess I just have, I have fat hair strands. Okay. The next fact is red hair does not turn gray. Did you know this? I, yeah, I know I said recently in a video, look at this gray streak that I have. Can you, you can see it right here. It's not really gray, it's blonde. What happens to red hair, it doesn't ever really turn gray, it will just fade. It fades to blonde and then it fades eventually into white. But like, you know, red hair is like a warmer tone. So when you've got like a proper blonde streak in your hair, it looks gray. By comparison, we'll never be salt and pepper because there's no, Pepper. <laughs> All right, now speaking of crazy red hair facts, did you know that red hair is harder to color? So red hair compared to, you know, brown hair, black hair, blonde hair, it holds on to pigment, you know, very strongly because the red hair pigments are smaller chemically than the other colors. So they just hold on super tight. So it's really difficult to color red hair, especially if your hair is like that deep coppery brassy tone really holds on to that color like nobody's biz. So if you wanted to go from like a deep coppery color to just like a warm honey brown color, you would probably have to bleach it first before the color could glom on to it. Otherwise it just doesn't take. And conversely, once that color is on that hair, it stays, <laughs> it stays. Next fact. Did you know redheads are more likely to be left-handed? Because recessive genes, they normally travel in pairs because, you know, they're shy. So a lot of times that red hair gene kind of latches onto the left-handedness gene. That's a recessive trait. Now, I didn't get that. <laughs> I'm a righty. But I did get another recessive trait that we will talk about later. And I'm really highlighting that zit, aren't I? <laughs> okay, so I did not get the left-handedness gene, but did you know that red hair and blue eyes is the most rare combination in the world? So blue eyes are a recessive gene as well. It might seem like they're pretty common, but they're not. You know, only 17% of Earth has blue eyes. I didn't know that. That seems like a small number to me. So when you combine that 17% blue eyed folks with the 2% of natural redheaded folks, that produces that combination in only 0.17% of the world's population. We're basically unicorns. Here comes the really fun stuff. Did you know that redheads feel pain differently than other people? So redheads are generally more sensitive to temperature changes. So they're gonna start feeling pain from heat or pain from cold faster than the average bear, which means that they're very accurate predictors of temperature changes. They also are less sensitive to electrical pain, which I'm um, glad I was not part of that study. 
<laughs> so that being said, even though the sensitivities might be higher or lower, depending on the type of, you know, pain, the redhead's pain tolerance is freakishly high. Redheads also are scientifically proven to produce more adrenaline than the average bear, and they also produce it faster. So if you are ever in a situation where you need that fight or flight response, and you got a redhead in the group, you're in good company. I might be a little wimp, and I'm always somebody who wears slippers, and I always like bring a jacket, especially at the movies, because I'll get like freezing cold, and I'll like start to hurt if I'm cold. But I can hang, man. I can hang for a long time. There was one time I was having regular routine medical procedure that was supposed to be like an, you know, an outpatient. You go into the doctor, you get this thing done, and then you're on your way. And it, it wasn't, wasn't working. And it was very painful. <laughs> it was very painful. The whole thing is supposed to take like maybe five to 10 minutes and they could not get it to work. So I ended up coming back. The first time I was on that table for like an hour. And then I ended up coming back for them to try again for another hour. Still didn't work. And then I ended up coming back a third time and it didn't work. And they ended up having to put me to sleep. Stubborn, I guess. So speaking of that, and this is definitely true and I can attest to this too, is redheads are harder to anesthetize. Weird, but true. So there's something that goes on in that same MC1R gene that determines your hair color and all that jazz where, you, where we get our redheadedness. That gene affects our natural painkillers like our endorphins and it makes us more resistant to pain blockers <laughs> which is fun so where we really see this is in like local anesthetic right so any kind of topical anesthetic lidocaine creams or novocaine like at the dentist doesn't work doesn't work this in the same way that it does for other people so i can tell you personal experience when i go to the dentist they have to use like a heroic dose of novocaine to work on my teeth and my teeth are crap my teeth, I have total soft, crappy chiclet teeth, but they have to use a lot of Novocaine, like a lot, <laughs> a lot. And it takes longer to kick in, you know, like they'll do the injection and then they're like, okay, they start poking around with their tools and stuff, expecting me to not feel it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. or they start drilling and I'm like, yeah. I can feel that. So they end up giving me so much that my like entire head goes numb. Typically when you leave the dentist, you're like back up and running within a couple hours after everything kind of wears off. Not me. And you know, my teeth are so shitty that I've had a lot of dental work. I have fillings in like every one of my teeth and it's not because I don't floss. Stop. Because of that little problem that ginger folks have with Novocaine and Lidocaine. Um, ginger folks are two times more likely to avoid going to the dentist. They develop the fear of going to the dentist because it's so painful. Even though we can take it, it still sucks. And also related to that, although local anesthetics don't really work, like regular anesthesia, yeah, it takes about 20% more to put a ginger down because they might wake up in the middle of surgery. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Let's talk about bees. <laughs> so did you know that gingers are more attracted to bees? And it's not just because our hair is bright and looks like a flower. It's not true. Okay, so bees are really attracted to fragrance, to smells, okay? And it turns out that ginger people have a distinct smell. We might not be able to smell it, you know, human to human. According to what I read, ginger people's skin mantle is more acidic naturally, and that is what causes you to smell different than the people around you and attract bees. You may have noticed, gingers, that sometimes you'll get a perfume that smells so good on somebody else and then you put it on yourself and it stinks because we're different. Also, in addition to, you know, perfume smelling different on us, fellow gingies, have you ever noticed that they don't last as long either? Okay, let's talk about redheads in history. So historically, we've gotten a bad rap, okay? I feel personally attacked and you should too. Ancient Greeks believed for serious. They believed that when redheads die, they turn into vampires. <coughs> in some cultures in current day, especially in like, you know, some African cultures, they believe that people with red hair are witches. During the witch hunts of the 16th and 17th century, thousands of women, especially, were burned at the stake just for having red hair. During the Middle Ages, if a child was born with red hair, it was believed that they must have been conceived during um, menstruation. <laughs> the uh, perfectly reasonable and not at all crazy Adolf Hitler, <laughs> he banned the marriage of redheaded people to prevent the birth of deviant offspring. You fucking with me? Well, despite all of that, you know, not so nice feelings through 
the years. Redheads are actually the most popular when it comes to pop culture references. So the number one hair color for female video game characters is, guess what? Red. I mean, it's manic panic from a bottle, not at all natural red, but it's still red. A recent study about, you know, representation in the media revealed that 30% of people cast in a commercial are redheaded. Only 2% of the earth is redheaded. Why are you so obsessed with me? I guess the point of that in the commercials is that redheads are such a novelty that the audience is thought to be more drawn in. I kind of want to do a red lip today. What do you guys think? I mean, my, my look is meant to be like universally flattering for all natural gingers, meaning peaches and cream, more warm toned on the eyes, but a red lip. I mean, I think it could be nice. Let's do it. So some of the most influential and notable figures in history were redheaded. Queen Elizabeth I, Mark Twain, Vincent Van Gogh, Winston Churchill, Marilyn Monroe, yes, Norma Jean was a ginger, Chuck Norris, Elvira, Cassandra Peterson, ginger, Malcolm X, ginger, look it up, his hair was red. So while I was looking up some famous and influential redheads through the years, uh, I found it really funny. The difference between a true ginge, like somebody who's natural born ginge, and somebody who's a pretender. So there are some famous, famously redheaded redheads that aren't really redheads. Did you know? There's no shame in being a bottled redhead, okay? We can't all be born perfect. <laughs> but somebody whose, you know, signature is their hair, it's not always what it seems, right? Okay, so Lucille Ball, that's one of the bottle girls. Emma Stone, famous redhead. Nope, she's, she's naturally blonde. Deborah Messing, Will and Grace. Oh, she's a brunette. Okay, so let's give it up for the, the true born sufferers of our redheaded affliction. Jessica Chastain, Eddie Redmayne, Nicole Kidman, who is a perfect example of someone who is going blonde. Molly Ringwald is another true ginge. Adam Lambert, natural ginger. Okay, that's a dedication. He's been coloring those brows, that hair, and that beard for years. You're ginger. Come back to us. Famed, influential historian and author Mark Twain once said, while the rest of the species is descended from apes, redheads are descended from cats. Being a ginger is part of what motivated me to make this channel. There's not a lot of representation here on the tubes. There's not a lot of people in my age group and there's not a lot of people in my age group who look like me, meaning goblin, ginger. But if you are someone who shares my traits and you're looking for some other redhead channels, natural or bottle redheads, some of my favorites are Glam and Gore, Mikey, she's a natural ginger. She does love a wig, super talented, love her. Joanna Storer from Simply Redhead, she's in the UK, beautiful natural ginge. She's on the younger side and her content is just really lovely and very focused on what works well for a goblin ginge. Zabrina here on YouTube, she, I don't know that she's a natural ginger, but she does wear her hair red a lot of the time and she does a lot of redhead focus makeup looks. Of course, my girl Linda from Glitter Fallout, we all know that her ginger comes from a bottle and she's, she's killing it. So Linda does more of like rock and roll type focus looks and you gotta check her out. She's my fave. And if you're looking for some more vintage styles, because you know, red hair somehow has been tied to more vintage styles like pinup, 40s, 50s, 60s. So some of my favorite vintage style channels are the Cherry Dollface. She's an OG here on YouTube. I've met her before and she's sweet as pie. So you really gotta check her out. Rachel Maxi. She's less pinup and more just traditional vintage. She does a lot of cosplay. She's super talented and fun. I love her. And one that is newer to me um, that I really love, her makeup is stunning, is the Pinup Palmer. Her makeup is beautiful and the editing in her videos is super fun. So the makeup look I did today, again, all of the products that I use will be down in the description box, including links for purchase if you are so inclined. So let me know in the comments below some of your favorite redhead focused makeup channels, beauty channels, fun lifestyle channels here on YouTube. Also, let me know if you've heard some of these redhead myths and if I missed some. I'm sure that I did because this video would have been eight hours long. We're weird. We're weird. We have a lot of weird quirks that are, that are we're just weird. Thanks so much for hanging out today and for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then consider subscribing to this channel before you leave. I upload new videos here on YouTube 
every Thursday. You can follow me on some of the other social channels as well. And that is it for today. I will catch you next week in next week's video. Bye. So the information on in, what the fuck is going on out there? Is that even? No. Are they myths? No. Fuck. Shit. Okay. Hello. Hello. Not a redhead. Gotta get this gullet. Color skin care. Really?